Science Central. Hi, I'm Steve Benkovic. I hope to be able to field some questions and have them leave me somewhat inspired about science. So your job is what? Uh, I'm actually studying to be an opera singer. Good for you. Thanks. Good for you. I started off as an English major, so I ended up in okay. science. You well, may end up in science too, right? Yeah, right. Every day we're pretty much, we're pretty much told that we share 95, 96% of our DNA with chimpanzees. It, does this inform in any way our, our actions or how we should look at ourselves, or does it really not mean much? No, I think it means a lot. I mean, I think it tells us uh, how we're connected in the sense to mostly everything else, and uh, how this whole DNA pool that uh, is the pool of genes that we use for our lungs, our heart, our brains, to see that uh, it came actually not only from chimpanzees, in a sense, they derived it in turn from bacteria, and it goes all the way back. It's really a snapshot in evolution. And so genetic pools, important for inheritance, now we are beginning to realize that they indeed can be modified as we go along, so that uh, even though you may have heard of, well, your genetics determine everything you are. I think what's going on now in the area of DNA genetics is that we can start to see how environment now influences how you behave and how it affects your genetic pool. So it's a really exciting time, good exciting time. So what else would you like to know about DNA? Don't ask too many hard questions. Yeah, don't ask too many hard questions. <laughs> Steve Bankovic. My name is Michael Park. Hi, Michael. Um, I had a question for you. I wanted to ask you about your views on scientists mapping out the composition of the human genome and predetermining people's susceptibility to diseases and disabilities such as Alzheimer's disease. That's a, that's a difficult question uh, and it's been debated and the reason for it being debated so much of course is everyone looks at the commercial side and what the insurance companies and all the other people might know about it, uh, and maybe that will prevent you from having a job. Uh, the other hand, other way of looking at it is, from the way I look at it, is uh, does an individual like yourself want to know that you're carrying that gene? And the European answer to that is, if we can't do anything about it, maybe we shouldn't tell them. Now, I do think, however, that mapping out the genes to know what areas of the gene have caught maybe a genetic information defect, maybe a change, might lead to disease somewhere down 20 or 30 years from now is useful. But what you have to remember, where we are right now in this, is that we can say your probability might be somewhat increased. Don't believe we can say you're going to get it, because that's absolutely not right. There are one or two diseases where we can honestly pinpoint them and say, yes, if you have this kind of set of mutations, you'll probably have Huntington's. Can we say it about cardiovascular disease or diabetes? No, we might suggest that that might be the outcome, but we have no way of telling you for sure that's going to happen. So what are you doing as a business major? Uh, I might be studying finance and management. So that means you're going to set up your own company or you're going to go into biotechnology? Quite possibly. I might be able to learn from you, first of all. 